pray with me? But Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Thank you for the life of Jen Brimmer, the joy and laughter he poured into all our lives. What a celebration. Thank you for how much we saw him care for us. And for everyone he had contact with. Help us do the same as we share the love of Christ to the world. Amen. Again, thank you all for coming.
As I thought back through the years, the thing that stood out was walking for me. Because all, he loved to walk. Even in the 70s and 80s, he would wake up on Sunday and walk four miles to church. And there was one time, I was about eight years old, we were visiting back after Thanksgiving. And he asked me if you want to walk. And I said, of course, and I go outside and meet him. He comes walking around the corner with what I can only imagine is the world's biggest walking stick. <laughs> An eight year old me couldn't grasp how anyone could effectively walk with a 30 foot candy pole. You see, we were going to find him. And I don't know if you ever had a chance to go for Crown Vic and fall off. But if you didn't, you missed a real treat. Because it wasn't really about the conference. It was about being out and enjoying the fresh fall air. It was about being in the community, knowing the neighbors, taking something that a lot of people saw as a nuisance they had to clear off their lawn and turning into something valuable. And I don't know if Paul would be right in the all that much, I'm sure he thought they were okay, but I think he loved having the chance to, to be outside. He didn't know people. And to get back because at the end of the season we collected four, five, sometimes six hundred pounds of the comments. We get crack and we have back and back and give them away. And he loved to serve people. Whether it was giving away pounds of the comments or Wednesday nights when he was giving out dinner at church or doing meals on wheels where he could bring food to those who couldn't get for themselves. He was a man who loved to love. He loved to do good. So I don't know if you knew Paul Ball as a convicter, walker, game player, traveler, dad, cousin, church member, friend. I think, however, however you know if he was here today, he wouldn't want us to remember him with sadness. I think events like this are always laced in sadness, but I think you'd want us to remember him by the good. And that I got 
younger and prettier than the last time he'd seen me. He loved his family fiercely, and he said the first time he saw Betty, she was the prettiest girl in the room. And the first time I heard him yell, Betty, Betty, Betty Graham, <laughs> laying in the chair with his eyes closed. <laughs> I'm glad 
glad you got to see me. <laughs> I did see him. I did hear him. And I did love him. But I'm most confident to know he is now with Jesus and he is completely seen, fully known, and perfectly loved. I have some gym stories I can tell. <laughs> about the time he was paddling the canoe. I'm just about in the freezing water. <laughs> about the reason why I only ever played one game of Monopoly with him. <laughs> For a kid. <laughs> and about the time he told me that he knew that I was the one who was going to marry his son. And I wasn't planning to marry anyone ever. <laughs> and it only took a decade for me to marry his son. But you can ask me about those stories later. I had many, many more years with Jim than I had with my own father. My father died when I was 11. Jim and I had 28 years of stories and conversations, projects, and debates. And with almost every interaction that we had, Jim would find a way to tell me how he admired me. He admired my strength for what I've overcome in my life and what I've accomplished. He would tell me how proud he was of me especially in my integrity, my patience, my ability to motivate and inspire others. And he always found a way to tell me and to show me that he loved me. <coughs> Not just because his son loves me, but because Jim loved me. He was not just my father-in-law. He was my father in truth. When Ben asked me to be the one to make the calls to all the family, friends, and tell them that the decision he made for Jim to receive hospice care, and then again to make the calls to let you know that Jim was gone, I didn't realize what a comfort and a blessing that would become for me. I heard the love in your voices. And as you shared your grief, and I heard your stories about how much Jim enhanced your lives, I heard how he showed you that he admired you, how he demonstrated that he was proud of you, or how he let you know that you were loved. Jim helped each one of us. Sometimes just by entertaining us with a game or a joke or silly hat. But always he helped us by inspiring us, encouraging us, and loving us.
resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. I read it from the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not walk. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness, for it is never said. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head of the poor, my cup of my hope. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will really dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And then from the 14th chapter of John. Do not be worried and upset, Jesus said to them. Believe in God, believe also in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house, and I'm going to prepare a place for you. I would not tell you this if it were not so. And after I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to myself, so that you will be where I am. When I go, you will not be left alone. I will come back to you. In a little while, the world will see me no more, but you will see me. And because I live, you also will live. And that day comes, you will know that I am in my Father, and that you are in me, just as I am in you. Peace is what I lay with you. It is my own peace that I give you. I do not give it as the world does. Not, do not be worried and upset. Do not be afraid. And from Peter's first letter. Let us give thanks to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of his great mercy, he gave us a new life of raising Jesus from the dead. This fills us with a living hope, and so we look forward to possessing the rich blessings that God keeps for his people. He keeps them for you in heaven, where they cannot be decayed, or spoiled, or forfeited away. They are for you who through faith are kept safe by God's power, for the salvation which is ready to be revealed in the end time. Be glad about this. Even though it may now be necessary for you to be saved for a while because of the many kinds of trials you suffer. I'm big glad in there. It was my privilege and the privilege of the Wagner family to be a part and we feel like we are very much a part of the Freeman family. Fifty-five years ago, we got acquainted. Our two boys bonded with their three boys and with their daughter, Allison. We spent many a weekend at the cabin, on a half hour's cabin on the lake, uh, where Allison had to put up with Five boys. <laughs> Allison, my appreciation to you. <laughs> we, uh, I mean, I got to be the ambassador then for 10 years, but we have stayed friends all through the years. In fact, uh, just a few weeks ago, I had lunch with you. We had a wonderful time together. His short term memory was already faded. But his long-term memory was sharp. And we spent an hour, hour and a half sitting there reminiscing 
about the many buried times that we had together. And as those uh, who shared a few moments ago, including the three women right when I was married, it was a wonderful time together. And I count Jim a dear friend all through these years. I'm privileged to be asked to be here and to do this, to help you celebrate the life of James Franklin French. As one word, I think sums up this unique. When God made Jim Franklin, he broke the up. <laughs> with another who reads the Bible. <laughs> when Jim was still very young, his mother got sick. 